Sacco from the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show. Welcome to um, our last day, Sunday, of our September virtual show. We're so happy that the feedback we've gotten, the participation from our artists, from our patrons, from our fans, it's just been like a really wonderful experience. We've, um, we have worked our butts off, but it's paying off and we're learning as we go so there's all these fun little glitches happening but we'll be pros we'll be pros and hopefully we'll see each other live june 2021 but until then i am an oil painter i live in lancaster pennsylvania beautiful central part of the state and normally at the rittenhouse show you can find me at 18th and locust and that part that side of the park has a lot of the restaurants and I was able to go visit the park this past Wednesday with another board member and I have to tell you we we just miss it so much we miss the vibe of the city and it just wasn't the same not seeing the artists surrounding the perimeter so again hope to be back June 2021 so stay tuned for all of that but in the meantime I am currently in our beautiful restored barn from the early 1800s. Uh, we're going to pan up and show you the light and the beams and the stonework. It's just been a real treat to kind of shelter in place here. We've turned it into quite the little fun living space. <laughs> the house is great too, but take a look at our projector screen. We're going to watch the Eagles today. Go birds. Go birds. But I also have put up my whole display that I normally would have at the outdoor show. And that was, that was really fun. It was no pressure. I wasn't racing against bad weather. And so I'm happy to bring it to you. So normally I have a beautiful studio in our house so we can walk over and Jim's going to show you that little small brick addition there. That's my studio. It's a really great space to work in. The house is beautiful. 1823. Very iconic Lancaster County farmhouse. It was a William Penn land grant. So it's been part of a three brothers came over from Switzerland and they were awarded three different properties in this area and two of the farms are still standing so we're fortunate enough, enough to live in one of them so let's take a little tour of the artwork and then i'll do a demo for you i'm going to be demoing using complementary colors the way some oil painters use this as a technique i don't necessarily do it all the time but today just for something fun and different i thought i would demo that for you so but join me in the gallery So the Rittenhouse Show has a beautiful online gallery itself. We've loaded up four pieces of artwork for uh, over 100 artists, and they're all for sale until 5 o'clock today. But I have uh, most of my artwork here is featured on my website, uh, kerrysacco.com. So this little wall here is typically what I do. There might be a little bit of a glare, but I do some plein air pieces most of this wall is lancaster county and chester county i like to work with the conservancies in both those areas they've invited artists to do paintings featuring the preserves and con conserved areas so it that's been really really fun to develop relationships and people who really love the land and want to protect it and that's just something that I feel really strong about too. This little sweet little one on the easel is featured on the online gallery for Rittenhouse. That's Swan Island in Maine and we just booked a trip up there the first week in October so believe me I'll get more painting in done up there. Turn to the other wall. 
So this is another beautiful, beautiful park that I'm strongly influenced by. It's Ridley Creek State Park in Delaware County, Media, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. The falls there are beautiful any time of year. This happens to be, you know, right in the middle of summer, so you have all those blue greens, and it's just wonderful. The, the creek itself, sometimes the falls are just rushing like Niagara Falls, but kind of on this day, it was a little bit of a, down to a little bit of a trickle. So around the other panel over here, I have an example of the same falls in winter. And this is a special painting that I love because we were there on the day that the Eagles were having their Super Bowl parade. So we weren't joining the mobs down in the city, but we took a nice walk with the dogs and then taped the, uh, <laughs> we taped the parade and went home and watched it. It was cold that day. It's very deceiving. But right back in here is where the falls are. This is featured on the online gallery as well. This is a plein air piece from the Delaware River outside of New Hope, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Impressionists, um, Garber, Daniel Garber, and Wood Redfield. It's just really great work from up there. And I was strongly influenced and understood the light. Mm. Who's saying hi? Okay, <laughs> hi. Okay, let's go to this panel. I love vintage, old, nostalgic things. This old GMC truck. I titled it Lifetime of Memories because if you you could only see what that truck had gone through in its lifetime. It's just, um, I love rusty old things. You'll see boats and water appear as themes in my paintings. This happens to be Ireland, Bantry Bay. The creeks surrounding our farmhouse, uh, there's a little Conestoga Creek. And again, it's wonderful in um, all, all types of weather. This is a summer scene. And then on the other side, Jim, you can show a winter scene. Zoom up. Here's a beautiful piece I recently finished. That is the uh, Pretty Marsh in Mount Desert Island in Maine. So stay tuned for plenty of Maine paintings coming up from us, from me. This is Cuca Lake Farmhouse. We did a great trip up there during harvest time. Finger Lakes, New York State. And then over here on this panel, this is what you'll see a lot at my outdoor shows. I bring small works, typically the urban shows, people are running out of wall space so they can always take stuff home. But my Songbird series up here, I listen to music a lot when I paint, and it's just it's kind of therapeutic. And I, if I hear a good song lyric or a phrase, I'll scratch it into the background. And it's just really, really special. And these birds have kind of grown, evolved with um, messages that people really like to hear and need to hear. They're always reminded of somebody that they love when they look at the songbirds. So they're just really sweet. They're all six by six. And most of them are all on my website. I just put this little bluebird on the website this morning. He's called, let's see what is he's called. He is called, It Changes You. So that was a, some words influence because we miss John Prine. He left us too soon from the COVID-19. So anyway, that's one of his songs, All the Best. And then my funny little roosters and critters there. We paint, I paint attitude and we title them accordingly, whether or not they are steadfast and true or attitude. This one's bring it on. That one, I titled it Bite Me 2020. <laughs> Couldn't think of too much else. It's the way we're all feeling, I guess. 
So if you want to chime in with any questions as I'm working, I'm fine to answer them as I'm going along. I like to babble a lot, so I might get off track. And uh, we'll go from there. So right now, I, I'm not in my comfortable studio element. So if we need to zoom in, I need a quick drink. If we need to zoom in on the painting, the painting as I'm working on it, please go ahead and I'm sure I'll have mention more. something in the comments. So what? Why don't you come over here? So let's zoom in on my palette first. Um, I was trained in painting at Millersville University here in Lancaster County, and then I continued with studying printmaking and oil painting at the Pennsylvania Academy. So I use a pretty traditional palette with double primaries. I like a warm and cool color in the primaries. That's what that means. I use transparent colors a lot for glazing and you'll see some transparency in the underpainting that I'm going to be working on. And by the transparent, you know, you, you'll see like a real see-through quality to some of these paints. Lizard Crimson, uh, Ultramarine Blue. My choice of oil colors, it, it totally varies. It's, it's all personal. Uh, during this shutdown, <clears throat> it's been kind of hard to get some of my paint unless you ordered online. And, but I had bought a whole series of tubes of Vasari paints from a workshop I had done and I was I had left them sit because the workshop was last fall and then I got so busy and then all of a sudden you know in March and April I'm like wait a minute I have a whole box of paint so it's been really fun exploring with them really great consistency quality to work with so that's Vasari paints and the medium that I work with is Galkid it makes a nice fluid flow for the paints and it gives it a nice gloss when the paint dries instead of drying uneven. Sometimes my plein air work, I use <clears throat> um, liquid and it, it tends to dry inconsistently and then I have to varnish and rework and everything. So, And I try to keep the, the paints, um, the only cadmium I use is a cadmium red light I don't use uh, like a cobalt blue anymore, cadmium red light. I do throw a cadmium yellow in there sometimes, but I'm just careful with those colors and everybody else should be. And my thinner is Gamsol and it's just, you know, supposed to be odorless. I know it all still affects us. It doesn't mean we're not breathing it in if it's odorless. But, so that's my palette. That's the way I like to work. I work disposable because I'm, it's nice to be on the go. And I love seeing other people's palettes, the big glass ones with just the mob of paint on it. But I just, I just like the disposable ones. And let's see, what, uh, what I like to paint on are panels. These are just masonite, I've gessoed them. They are transportable. I like the surface of them. Sometimes with canvas, it doesn't give me a texture that I'm aiming for. And so when I do work on canvas, I tend to have my paint a little bit thicker because that little pebbly part of the canvas, I, I just don't like sometimes. But other people have mastered it. So. Well, what I'm going to try to do for you today, uh, I started one little outline drawing, and then I'm going to sketch another uh, painting, and I'm going to show you how I apply transparent layers to be used as an underpainting. So what I do is I look at the initial color of what I'm painting and say it's 
simple as green fields, you know, yellow flowers. Uh, it could be the rooster, the um, comb. I'll take the opposite color on the color wheel and I will do thin transparent washes of those opposite colors. So my rooster paintings might have, um, you know, he'll have this beautiful plumy comb, but it, I'll have it in green. And then as I apply thicker layers of the real color on top, I try to let some of that underside show through. And I just have fun with it. It's, it's, it simply, it is a great effect. But again, I don't always do that. A lot of times, uh, especially like my landscape artist friends, they paint using like a real warmish, reddish, transparent color. And it shows up really well on the edges of like green fields, tinged in red. It, it makes the painting a little bit more dynamic. So let me check my time. Oh, we're at a... 12:15 already. Does anybody have any questions? Hi everyone. Where are you where are you painting for the new people? Where am I painting? Oh, I'm painting in our barn. I I moved my whole display panels from our written house my written house show up into our barn to show you a better virtual edition. I had a Zoom booth on Friday. That was kind of interesting. <laughs> but thanks for everyone who's been tuning in all weekend to see all of our events. So, okay, well, let me get started. If this is a little bit darker, but we can always zoom in a little bit. So the first thing I'll do is do a light sketch of the next painting that I'll be working on, which is uh, a painting of our little mini horse. Somebody just so, asked where he is. So he's here's the, the horse is out grazing down by the pond. I tried to bring him in here before, but he just kind of, he's a bull. He, he's a mini horse in a china shop. He's a bull in a china shop. And, he, and he's very nosy and very social. So he would, I'm sure, disrupt us more than anything. So I mix a light solvent thinned wash to use to sketch. The, the other pets in the house, let's see, we have Adam, the Australian Shepherd here. And the cat, the cat made an appearance. The puppy's locked up in the house. We have, a, we have another puppy visiting. And those of you who don't know me, or those of you that do and have heard this before, back in March, when the world shut down, we had already agreed to foster a pregnant dog. And she had nine puppies in my studio. And it was one of the best experiences we ever had. So we got all the puppies adopted. We kept one. And so we just are loving our experience and but they're still puppies and we have one visiting now so two puppies in the barn wasn't happening so i'm just breaking this up but the the main character in the painting is going to be the mini horse but in the i see i see greens i see violets so i'm i'm going to i meant to sketch him out a little bit um His name is Caboose. He's adorable. He has his own Instagram page, Caboosey1. I have Instagram too. I'm Sacco Carey. And I'm Carey Sacco Paintings and Lithographs on Facebook. So there's just really fun shadows in this. Cat. The cat just came in. Mm -hmm. We just love our little studio assistants. So I'll just kind of keep that loose. And then I sometimes wipe out. <clears throat> I wipe out some of my little excess lines. But the, the, the solvent dries pretty fast.
Okay, so I'm going to let the kabusi sit. Or no, wait, let me, let me go in with some transparent color, and then I'll go into the pig painting. I do love to paint animals, and I love landscapes. One of the cool things about the shutdown is a friend of mine, Beth Babe, she started putting up paint photographs that her partner Bill took of models and photo shoots. He's a photographer. And she would, she would post them all for people just, you know, locked up in their houses. And we all had fun. Every Friday we would do figurative work. Um, so I'm just going to do a light washes of, of a blue for him because he kind of is a tan, reddish, orangey color. So I, I'll add some of that on there. He has a beautiful blonde mane. So we just, we're, we have a lot of fun here on our little farm. Great place to be during all this mess. Okay, so then what you see are lots of greens, a big fields of green. So I'm going to take those reds and do washes of them. I'll thin a little bit. And... I'll just work with some reds. His shadow is a pretty deep dark red. I'm still keeping the value of, of some of the shadows because then I'll wipe out a little bit, thin that red even more, and go a little bit lighter with some of the bright, bright greens, which the opposite color I'm using is red. And, you know, I even see yellows in there, so you could even have fun and use a, a violet color in there to counteract. A little better there. So most of all, all this other stuff is in shadow, born up here. I'll just keep that really loose for now. Uh, Jimmy, I can't read that. Sorry. If you, can you read it? Uh, can we put a little more light on the painting? Um, it's very hard. We can we can hold it out like that. I don't have oh, the good. I don't have really great lighting because I'm up here in the barn. Yeah, you read. You can read the comments because I can't see. All right, so that's just going to dry a little bit. We're going to set that down, and then I'm going to switch to a another painting. So these are just little farm critters. My sanctuary friends have. They're doing a great job just rescuing animals in horrific conditions. My family is really <laughs> into rescuing foster, but mostly dogs and cats. But my other friends that take care of other animals, it, it's just a labor of love. Okay, let me find this little piggy. So I was learning something about big farm pigs. Like they're not meant to be that like light pink that you see pictures of. They're that they're you know typically supposed to have a more a darker coloring, and it just makes them so prone to getting sunburn, and that's why they have to go into the you know wallowing in the mud and everything like that. So. Some of these farm animals. All right, it's not responding, which is typical. I'm just going to make up some transparent colors that I see. All 
my colors. Now all my stuff just disappeared. All right, I'm looking for Katniss here. Give them another tour of the paintings, Jim, while I'm looking for my, for my reference photo. No, but that's okay. All right, so for the pig, I can just make it up because I know I know what I had been looking at. So I'll hold it out here so you see a little bit more light. And I have the right up in this area was um, trees and, and you know pines and things like that. So I'm going to use kind of my real hot like reds back there because I'm going to do my like a line of trees showing yeah. through that. Carrie, uh, talk a little bit while you're doing that of Stan's Records. Where is that? Oh, Stan's Records is an iconic <clears throat> record store in downtown Lancaster. It's been there for at least 50 years. Oh, yeah. Um, still sells vinyl, still sells um, CDs, and uh, you can find it all and that storefront is it's just right on Prince Street downtown so I did that little painting as a plein air piece one of my friends said you know he slowly in order to pay his bills in college was um, selling off his CD collection to stands the storefront hasn't changed for 50 no years. it's that it's just it's just really great okay so I've started kind of a reddish line of trees in the background and then the foreground was like a mix of greens, if I can recall, but I'm going to add some a little, a different little touches of a purple to that. And you'll see what, I, what happens when I start putting thicker paint on top of that. Now the sky up behind her, when I do an underpainting for sky, I like to use a lemon yellow it, and very thinned down. That's so funny that the cat has made an appearance here. I should have painted him. He made, he made a cameo. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so again, if you're looking for more of my work, it's carriesacco.com. All right, our piggy. I'm just going to have fun with our pig now and give... Actually, it's a she. Her name is Katniss. She's a kick-ass noble warrior all right so I'm gonna give her little green washes I had conducted a Instagram interview at 11 this morning. I interviewed one of our other show artists, Kathleen Murphy Willer, and it, it was neat. I might have been breaking up a little bit, but she lives in Wisconsin, and this is just so great. We've been able to connect all of our show artists and bring them to you, and just being able to learn about all the other artists. So I, that's just kind of fun as it is. So I don't really, you don't really have to let it dry. It kind of dries on its own. So let me wipe off some of my transparent color here. Let me check my time. Okay, I have about 15 minutes to create a masterpiece. Well, 
We have a YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, a lot, all of these videos will be up on that soon. We have our demos from, <laughs> set the horse too. We have the demos from our June show up. We have a great five o'clock club, which every Thursday at five, our show artists get on Facebook Live and do a demo or a talk or an interview. Typically at the show, I'm on the board of directors and I help out with our volunteer recruitment as well as our uh, outreach partners. And I really just love and miss all of those people. I did three great Instagram interviews with our outreach partners. So if you go back on IGTV on, through Rittenhouse Square, you'll see them. It was Portside Art Center, uh, there's Studio in Caminati's program, Project Home, which is just so great. Formerly homeless people, they offer them a 12 week drawing and painting class, and Art Reach, which helps with people with um, disabilities and low income, you know, giving them access to the arts. And you learn what all these three of these organizations have done for the shut, during the shutdown, and like totally stepped up to the plate and provided opportunities for people. So, okay, there's a fly, but we are in a barn. Okay, so now I'm gonna keep working on our little, um, our little Katniss. So I go back with darks first. And as I remember, the photo started off dark here. So I do use a sap green, which is a nice transparent green. But there's other great greens that I like to mix as well. I throw a little bit of ultramarine blue and my transparent yellow oxide. You can make a great green color with just um, those tubes of black paint that I never use straight black. I always mix my own blacks, but um, there's just a variety here. Now I might throw a little extra color in there. So I'll add touches of my Galkid medium to the colors I've mixed. But most people choose their own medium that they're comfortable with. All right, so that was just kind of a, a rough little tree line back there. I'm just going to loosely sketch that in. And then I'm going to get some darkness back there because I'll, I'll showcase her, her little snout once I... Are you going back to blue slow? No, I'm not going to go back to the horse painting because I lost my reference photos. My computers decided to stop working. But, um, and then I'll go to my sky because you have to be careful when you're working adding blues to an underpainting like this because all of a sudden you'll have a green sky. But actually, there's a ton of green reflecting up in the sky. Let me get this brush a little bit cleaner. So let's see, I'm gonna do have a gray here. I'm just going to break up some stuff in the sky and then I'll make it lighter. But I turn my brush back and forth because I try to add a fresh little touch of paint with every stroke. If you start dabbing, 
it, it completely starts muddying up your painting. Try just straight King's Blue. Now I'll go a little bit lighter. So there still is the yellow showing through. Oopsies. But that's kind of a cool effect. She's just living her best life, not being farmed for somebody's dinner table. <laughs> All right. So I'll bring a little bit um, more into my foreground. Hey, Carrie. Yeah. The comment is you seem to be a master of working wet on wet. Do you worry about muddying up the piece? Um, no, I don't because I've learned how to stop. And that's one of the things that beginning painters just are always have to keep themselves in check. And if you take classes over and over again, you'll hear teachers saying that. Um, so I've just learned how to control it over the years, but it is, it is discipline. It is not, it is continuing to work over the whole painting. It's continuing to see relationships, bringing a little bit of a color um, of what you're working with back up into your next color, keeping your lines kind of loose and fluid. And so it's, it's just really been, you know, a lifetime of learning how to handle paint. But thank you for... <laughs> saying that. And it, even if you're, I, I sometimes in mixing, you know, my, my reds, I make them more orangey, I mean, or my yellows, I make them more, more orangey to bring them forward a little bit. But see how that little purple showing through? I just really like that. So, it's just up to you to how much you want to keep in there. And you can go start going as thick as you want, but just touch and then remove. I know the answer to the next question. Oh, you do. So do you work on a few pieces at the same time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is my husband, <clears throat> Jim Warner, my cameraman. He's been my cameraman now through Several studio tours, several two written house shows now. Uh, I did the five o'clock club when that was back in um, back in July, I think. So he's he's a pro. He knows he can go out for a bike ride and freeze in here ten minutes before showtime. <laughs> All right, now let's start working on this piggy because now I'm going to bring her forward. How much time do I have? Oh. Good. Let's see what we can do in five minutes. And believe me, I don't usually work this fast, but I do work on several pieces at a time. Um, I, and if I have the time to let them dry, I will. But a lot of times with oils, I, I kind of go back and smooth out areas in preparation for going back in <laughs> later. What are you laughing Somebody at? Somebody said, six minute pig. Six minute pig. <laughs> so I know that uh, piggies, they usually have this like wonderful um, deep, like when the sun's like shining through their, their ears, I know they have that wonderful Translucent. translucence. Who, who said translucence? That was great. Did you just come up with that word? Oh my gosh. Are you married to an artist? <laughs> so now that's like the fold. I'm going to go back in with some, some of my alizarin crimson.
because just like with um, when you're do I'm doing figurative work, alizarin is a great color to bring up certain lines. Speed painting with Perry. So let me ask, how much does a pig cost? I, I think they sell them by the pound. Oh. <laughs> you mean the actual pig painting? I if you were to buy this pig painting on my website, it would probably be 240. And that's six by six. Right? It is. Right there. And I, I remember from the reference photo, that little ridge there. I just kind of go with the topography of the animal. But again, check out our website and all the other events that are happening. Plenty more. We're only at noon. We go till five. Oh, there's her other little foot. Her little trotter. And Their snouts are, I don't have my glasses on, but their snouts are usually like a higher, brighter color. And I have to keep her little smile in there because that's what struck me about her. She's just having a a good little time. All right, let's check the time again. Twelve forty-four. Well, I'll work on this and hopefully get it up on my website by the end of the show today. But to any board members who are watching, hang in there, guys. I have, if anyone is local to Lancaster, I have my barn open till 5 o'clock today. There will be football on, but my little gallery is staying open. So I would get like a finer brush and work on her little eye and everything, then maybe work with a little bit more value. But I just really appreciate everyone tuning in and loving art. It, it is our life. Art is our life. And we hope that you've been inspired. So CarrieSacco.com, check it out. Go Eagles. What? Go Eagles. Oh yeah, go, go Eagles. And um, be well, be safe, and we miss you all. See you next June. Bye.